July 27th, 2021 Plan Commission to order. Roll call, please. Uh, starting with Commissioner Hannah, who is virtual with us tonight. Christine, uh, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hannah here. Thank you. Sullivan here. Still here. Kavich here. Oldani here. Seepard here. Chandler here. And Alderman Guzikowski and Alderman Lark are excused tonight. Uh, that will get us to the approval of the minutes of July 13th, 2021. Does everybody take a peek? You haven't already? And when you're satisfied there's no omissions, errors, corrections, motion please. Seepard moves to approve the minutes of July 13th, 2021. And a second. Hold on. And with a second. Uh, roll call beginning with Commissioner Hannah. Hannah, aye. Sullivan, aye. Rillo, aye. Avich, aye. Aldani, aye. Super, aye. Chandler, aye. And that will get us to significant common council actions. Carrie, if you would, please. Council approved the following. An ordinance amending section 17.0327 of the municipal code, which would establish standards for the traditional neighborhood development plan unit development district. Also an ordinance to rezone the property at 2121 East Rawson Avenue from B2 community business to B3 office and professional business district with no change to the existing conditional use permit. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, that will get us to uh, Board of Housing and Zoning Appeal Actions. None were taken. That was item four. Uh, I'm sorry, item five. Item six is quarterly parks, rec, and forestry commission actions. The next report will be October 26th. And that will get us to old business. Uh, item 7A is consideration of a temporary use permit uh, submitted by Charles DeWitt. For Jim Dandies for an outdoors event series, temporary outdoor event space, shipping container bar, elevated patio, extended ground level patio space, concert stage, temporary parking on the properties at 88, 68, and 8900 South 27th. I'm going to turn that over to Lori. Hi, Mayor. Uh, as you probably all recall that we've heard this proposal um, this will be the third time in front of Plan Commission in the last month and a half. Uh, it was put placed in hold so that the applicant would have an opportunity to go and meet with the neighborhood, with the neighborhood to ask what is a realistic amount of events that they can hold on the property, um, and also to work with staff a little further on the proposal and fine tune it. Um, so that was on June twenty second when it was first hold. We had July seventh. We actually scheduled the first meeting with the neighborhood, but unfortunately had to cancel due to lack of public notice um, and, a, and a family emergency. It occurred as well. Um, July thirteenth, we heard it again at Plan Commission, um, and the applicant requested that it be held. And at that time, the applicant talked to Alderman Kuzkowski and myself about potentially changing the plans that were presented at the June 22nd meeting. There has, the plans have not been finalized yet. Um, so it is not, um, in, in its current state, it's not the same. Uh, on July 20th, we scheduled, um, on July 21st, we scheduled another neighborhood meeting, but unfortunately on July 20th, we discovered that the, the meeting notices did not go out as planned. Uh, so sadly we were forced to cancel and I would like to apologize to the members of the public that showed up for that meeting and unfortunately came to the building and saw the canceled notice. Uh, on July 23rd, we reached out again to the applicant to schedule another meeting. Uh, the applicant responded this afternoon and we've decided to hold that meeting on August 9th at 6 p.m. in the multi-purpose room, which is right behind this room here. Um, and so that right now, as it stands, the staff does not support the current proposal, mostly because we also know that it's not the same as uh, what Mr. DeWitt would like to move forward with. Okay, thank you, Laurie. Um, so just to paraphrase that very quickly for uh, the public, I know a lot of residents turned out, as well as the commission. Uh, Mr. DeWitt's going to have a neighborhood meeting August 9th, directly to our west in the multi-purpose multi room. Uh, I myself, I've already got in my calendar, I will also be attending as well as um, uh, Lori Miller. And I believe Alderman Guzkowski is gonna try to get there too. Um, I don't know if he has a prior commitment. I don't wanna speak for him. Uh, but either way, uh, then the resident input will come in in the appropriate amount of concerts and things that 
that can be mutually decided upon and the proper plan can come in front of this commission. So currently what's in front of us and what was listed in public notice has to be voted on. Um, so again, uh, the motion would be to deny. Doesn't mean we're done. It just means we're going back to the drawing board with a plan that's accurate to what we're actually going to vote on. Did I sum that up well, Lori? Good enough. Perfect. Okay. So I hope that was clear if, if there are Oh, Carrie. Just a point of clarification. When you do make the motion, please make it in the affirmative. And if you wish to vote against it, please cast a vote in the negative. Thank you. So um, hope that's clear as it's written. And then it would be a no. So um, with that, I don't know if we really need to do any questions because I'm sure we'll have plenty on the ninth. So uh, again, I apologize. I know you, you guys have been out here quite a bit. Um, but I'm glad to see the neighborhood involvement and the input so we can figure out how to coexist as best as possible between residential and business. So uh, with that, I will ask for a motion. I'll go. Holdani moves that the plan commission approves the temporary use permit, allowing the outdoor event series, extended outdoor elevated and ground level patio space, concert stage and shipping container bar as submitted by Charlie DeWitt Jim Dandies for the properties at 8868 and 8900 South 27th Street with the following conditions. One, that all relevant code requirements remain in effect. Two, the sections, that sections 11.26 and 17.0810 of the municipal code related to noise remain in effect for all outdoor events and activities. No additional hours of operation for the outdoor events and activities beyond the hours specified in these code sections is included in the approval. Three, that all state and local health codes, including licensing and inspection requirements remain in effect. Four, that the site plan be revised to show the storage container bar, stage and extended patio placed solely on the property of 8900 South 27th Street in an area approved by the plan commission prior to submission of permanent applications. Five, that all outdoor structures event spaces, parking and patio areas shall be located in areas per the map approved by the plan commission. Six, that all detailed revised plans are submitted in digital format to the Department of Community Development prior to submission of permit applications. Seven, that all required permits, electrical building, etc., are approved prior to the use of all proposed structures. Eight, no additional outdoor lighting is included in this approval. Nine, that all signs comply with section 17.0 0709 temporary banners and construction signs and be issued a temporary sign permit. 10, that the maximum number of all outdoor events be reduced, number to be de determined by the plan commission. 11, that assigned authorization, including a map clearly indicating all authorized areas for the temporary parking of vehicles on the property of 8868 South 27th Street directly related to the temporary use permit is submitted to the Department of Community Development development by no later than June 24, 2021. 12, that the storage container bar, concert stage, and extended patio space shall not be erected more than 24 hours prior to any authorized schedule event. Each date of an authorized schedule event shall constitute a separate event. 13, that the storage container bar, concert stage, and extended patio space shall be removed from 24, within 24 hours following an authorized schedule event. Each date of an authorized schedule event shall constitute a separate event. 14, that the temporary use permit shall expire September 5th, 2021. The property shall be restored to its pre-temporary use condition by no later than September 6th, 2021. Outstanding violations shall be cured per the methods and deadlines as detailed in letters of violation. Two per seconds. All call starting with Commissioner Sullivan. Sullivan, nay. Hello, no. Bukavich, nay. Donnie, nay. Super, no. Chandler, no. And I know. And there you go. So once again, uh, we will be convening at 6 p.m. August 9th, multi-purpose room. Um, thank you. Look forward to the meeting and finally moving forward with this with some definite direction and plan. Thank you. That will get us to 8A. New business, um, consideration of conditions and restrictions for a request submitted by Dave Decker of Deckard Properties for plan unit development at 8100, 8146 South 27th and 8100 South Orchard Way. Carrie? 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Plan commissioners may recall that the rezone and planning to development requests were recommended for approval by the Common Council at the last meeting, which was July 13th. The proposal for those of you who recall is to rezone these three parcels to RM1 multifamily in anticipation of a multifamily residential development on those properties, which includes 218 units and about 10 buildings. That's also including a clubhouse and a pool. So uh, the, the development plan is shown on the screen. We did talk about some of the deviations and modifications from the code that we were uh, entertaining from the applicant. They included uh, setbacks, height modifications, and modifications to the dimensions of the allowed signage, as well as building materials. However, since that meeting, there have been some changes to the plans. Uh, the proposed sign now meets all the dimensional requirements. The building materials were modified so that vinyl siding was removed and metal roofing materials were removed. The setbacks are still the same and the heights of the buildings as proposed remain the same. These are the elevations that have been updated showing the changes in the materials, not much change to the clubhouse itself, but the, there's a rendering that's been updated for the plan commission. This is a view from the interior of the um, extended road to 27th street. So that's the entrance of the clubhouse. And the rest of the elevations show that the uh, vinyl siding has been replaced mostly by uh, cement board lap siding or board and batten siding. And there was some um, masonry material that has been added at the base of the building. And again, all metal roof elements have been eliminated in favor of the continuation of asphalt shingles. And commissioners will also recall that there was a request for this to be constructed in three different phases, which is shown on the screen right here. And we did have some conditions and restrictions that were going to address that. But prior to that, the applicant has provided a brief fly through video showing the development as you are entering from 27th Street. So the first building that you'll see is the clubhouse and then wrap around. Turning now to the conditions and restrictions, if you turn to page two of seven under section two H, prior to the issuance of any permits for any portion of the development, the applicant or landowner shall submit all city approved certified survey maps for recording. There has been one certified survey map that went through the process and was approved this year. Two I, a master landscaping plan for the overall development shall be submitted to the plan commission for approval prior to the review of any project within the plan unit development. For each stage of a development, detailed landscaping plans showing location types and initial plant sizes of all evergreens, et cetera, shall be submitted to the Plan Commission for approval. This is requiring that the landscaping is installed for the PUD, and especially as it pertains to the public road that goes through there. Section three, under the site use and maintenance and operation requirements, a, the restriction is a maximum of 10 multifamily buildings and a maximum of 218 units, which is what's in the proposal. Accessory buildings, garages, a clubhouse, and a pool may be permitted so long as they're compliant with all applicable provisions of the municipal code and these conditions and restrictions. B, buildings A1, A2, A3, and A4 shall not exceed 56 feet in height. No other residential building in the PUD shall exceed 50 feet in height. C, the clubhouse shall not exceed 36 feet, five inches in height. No other accessory building in the PUD shall exceed 17 feet in height. D, exterior building materials shall be provided in accordance with section 17.1009A. Vinyl siding shall not be utilized on any building within the PUD. E, signage for the development shall be in conformance with section 170316 and all other applicable sections of the municipal code. The remainder is the kind of the boilerplate that we have for all other developments. However, H states that the clubhouse, pool, public extension of Orchard Way, and all public infrastructure shall be constructed as part of the initial phase of the development. 
The clubhouse and pools shall be completed prior to or concurrent with the issuance of occupancy permits for any residential buildings. Under section four, parking and access, basically the one that I wanna draw your attention to is the fact that the 27th street access does need to be approved and permitted by WSDOT. Lighting has to comply with all sections of the code. Section six just is a, a reminder that impact fees will be assessed based on the number of bedrooms and that's per, stat, or per our local code. Under section seven, building and parking setbacks, you'll notice that this chart has been expanded from what we usually see, and that's because we wanted to incorporate the modification requests that had been requested that the plan commission had uh, been in favor of at the last meeting. So each of the buildings that have modification requests are represented here. All other principal structures must meet the minimum setback requirements per the district. So that's 30 feet from the front, 25 feet from the rear, and 10 from the side. Off-street parking must be five feet from all. Under section seven, the time of compliance, this is where the benchmarks that we had discussed at the last meeting are spelled out. Phase one of the planned unit development shall commence within 12 months of the date of the adoption of, of the ordinance authorized, authorizing this planned unit development. Issuance of a building permit shall constitute commencement of construction. Phase two shall commence within 24 months from the date of adoption of the ordinance. Phase three shall commence within 36 months from the date of the ordinance. And all phases of the plan unit development shall be complete with certificates of occupancy issued for all buildings within 48 months from the date of adoption of the author uh, ordinance authorizing this plan unit development. So that basically says that you have 36 months to start all phases and 48 months to complete all phases. The plan unit development shall expire 12 months after the date of adoption if a building permit has not been issued for phase one, 24 months if it has not been issued for phase two, 36 months if it has not been issued for phase three, and 48 months if, it has not, if occupancy permits have not been issued for all buildings. Upon expiration of the permit, the applicant shall reapply for a plan unit development approval prior to recommencing work or construction for any phase of development. Now, as with conditional use permits and any other plan unit developments, an amendment can be requested prior to the expiration of the ordinance um, to ask for an extension of the time of compliance section. All of the remainder of the conditions and restrictions are pretty much boilerplate from what we usually see. And with that information, there is a suggested motion for approval on the screen. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, Mr. Decker, would you like to say anything before we go to commission and talk? But if you have anything to say, please uh, name and address. Sure. It's Dave Decker with Decker Properties, 250 North uh, Sunny Slope Road, Suite 290 in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Um, I just appreciate the support that we've had and the unanimous vote uh, at the last meeting. I'm here to answer questions. I really like the, the pictures that we did in the, the video. I think a picture and a video is worth a thousand words. So. I'll let it go at that, and I'm here to answer any questions. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, before we start, Carrie, did they recommend we read this into the record? It's, it really doesn't say, but. It didn't, but since it was submitted through the website, I would recommend that it, did, it is rec read into the record. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> my mess here, let me find it. Mr. Mayor, if you would like, I have it in front of me. I got it. Um, this, this was an email sent to Alderman Lorick uh, by a resident, <clears throat> uh, Daniel Salon. Uh, I unfortunately am out of town this week, but wanted to make sure the resident's email is seen. Uh, so the Alderman forwarded it prior to this meeting and wants it considered in consideration for the record. Uh, the email states, as your neighbor and constituent, I hope you have seen the adverse effect of apartments that were added last year. The proposal you will be taking up on Tuesday night will only add to the problem. 200 plus more apartments is not what we need. We have more cars, more speeding and reckless driving. Even the transport van for Inspire constantly speeds through on Jonathan Drive. When 300 plus development was first proposed, Orchard Way was to be cut off from them. But as the process went along, it was opened up and has hurt our subdivision. Please oppose this development. So that's for the record. Um, so anyways, 
Uh, with that, uh, we will go to commission for questions. Uh, Christine, would you like to start? Comments, questions? Yes, uh, I actually have a question for Carrie. So Carrie, if I understood you correctly, we still have the heights of the building are not meeting codes. Is that correct? That's correct. The plan commission did not have any con concerns with that at the last meeting that were expressed to me. So therefore, the A buildings can be 56 feet in height as opposed to 50 feet in height. The clubhouse can be up to 36 and a half feet in height as opposed to 17 feet in height. So what is the reason for that uh, exception or the requirement to go above that height? Looking at the buildings, I can't really see the justification for that. At the last meeting, the applicant's engineer had stated that for the A buildings, there was a grade change that led to uh, the building appearing to be 56 feet in height in some sections. It's not the entirety of the building, um, but that was basically due to the grade change as it slopes from uh, north down to the wetland. Uh, as far as the clubhouse is concerned, that was um, not in entirely aesthetic driven. Uh, but there was some architectural consideration that was given to the design of the clubhouse. It's not unusual for us to see clubhouse height exceptions. 17 feet is really for an accessory building. Um, that will actually be changing in the code update. However, what we have applied in the past is a, is a 17 feet. But again, we have received modification requests and other um, multifamily residential dwelling developments. Okay, thank you. Another question, uh, and it's actually related to that resident concern that uh, the mayor just read. Uh, have there any traffic studies or safety concern has been looked at in that development regard and what impact would that do to the residents? I do know that uh, WISDOT has reviewed this and the the development that has been referenced, which is the seasons at Orchard Hills, that was done in 2018. I don't recall whether or not there was a traffic impact analysis that was done for this area, but again, the um, the traffic patterns along 27th Street and through the developments were reviewed by Wista and internally. Okay, so there will be a traffic impact analysis for this development, right? I would have to defer to somebody else. Perhaps Commissioner Sullivan would be able to answer that question. I have uh, not been aware of one that's been requested from the city to the developer, um, nor has DOT requested that. Well, I'm not really sure if the DOT is aware of it, but I guess from what I heard and living in that neighborhood in this area, I think it would be a good, um, justification for this development if it get questions later on and to um, affirm everyone that we looked at this development from all aspects that from the safety perspective from speeding i know sometimes it's an enforcement issue versus development issue but also we need to do our due diligence to ensure that we looked at all aspects so that would be my recommendation at this point we did go through an official map amendment and right-of-way vacation process where WISDOT was also involved in that because we had the uh, future roadway pattern and the access management plan for 27th Street that were considered for the area, including this development and the developments, uh, the redevelopment opportunities to the north. So WISDOT has reviewed this and as Commissioner Sullivan stated, they have not requested or required a TIA to this point. Um, but we have looked at the traffic patterns as it goes from Pewts all the way up to um, Drexel. Well, maybe I'm misunderstanding you. So does WISDOT know about this specific development and what impact would it do to that segment of 27? Yes, WISDOT has been involved in the review of these plans. In fact, they were instrumental in the review of the reconfiguration of the roadway pattern through this development. Okay. All right. That answered my question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Matt? I have no comments in regards to the conditions and restrictions. No. Uh, Don? Nothing for me. Don? No questions. Fred? I have a question. You talked about aluminum for roofing material at one time. Are they dropping that request or are they going? It's all shingle now. It's all asphalt. It's all off then. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I thought. I was curious. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Commissioner Chandler. And then if you could also go over the other change uh, with the siding or the cement board. Yes, so the vinyl was not acceptable as an exterior building material per code and the plan commission indicated at the last meeting that that would not be supported. Therefore, the applicant and his consultants have revised the elevations for all the buildings. There is no vinyl that has been proposed as part of these buildings any longer. It is all fiber cement. Um, when we get to site and building plan review, if this is approved by the commission and the council, uh, there will be a chance for the plan commission to review the materials at that time and make a three quarter majority approval for the fiber cement at that time. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess I'm, I'm last. Um, we have, we have some people here probably from the area. Does anybody wish to say anything? I normally don't do this. It ain't really a public hearing, but if anybody want to say something, no. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we were in here a couple weeks back and kind of had a long, long meeting and really dissected a lot of this. And it really uh, went on the aesthetics of the building. Uh, Carrie covered much of this, just really uh, summed it up better than I probably can. Uh, the height of the buildings, again, was with the topography. It's, it's, it's a little out of whack, but given the way it drops going to the wetlands, um, it was acceptable. The, the six foot difference ain't going to make a hill of beans a difference one way or the other. Um, the vinyl siding, I want to thank you for coming back to staff as directed. You know, they wanted to um, put some vinyl siding on here, and, you know, we have no idea what that product's like or what have you. Uh, so we did follow our code, and um, I do appreciate you guys coming back for that. And there was a little consternation with the metal roof, and that has changed over. So uh, I like to see that. Uh, just for the general public's knowledge, you know, there's, there's a lot of confusion you know, the, these roads go in on Orchard Way and, and they're designed the city specs. They're as wide as they should be. Uh, the speed limits are set the way they are. Uh, the traffic pattern out of there is designed to go off 27th Street, as Carrie said, and connect through there. Uh, we, you know, we realize when things like this happen, they do impact neighborhoods and, and we, we try to um, ease it as, as, as smoothly as possible. And we did that with Orchard Way and we debated that quite a bit. Uh, as to what we would do and how we would accomplish it. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, people drive the way they drive, and this just doesn't exist in new subdivisions. It exists in old ones. Uh, some of our older subdivisions off 27th Street, farther to the north, uh, have some serious problems with people coming through, and um, really people have to be respectful of what's going on, but you know, really, uh, I do believe most people will exit out to 27th as their best bet to get where they're going. Um, in regards, you know, to the to the email we read about more apartments and things of that nature, um, this is part of our comprehensive plan, and it it always was laid out that way to to be residential. Um, when we say residential, most people picture single family home subdivisions, and we're striving to do that, but. By the same means, uh, our strategic plan also calls for inclusiveness, which includes a variety of different places to live, and that includes impart apartments. And this is an appropriate use of the land and, and where it goes. And um, we see this all the time, and we have another one on, on deck later on, and it's kind of the same situation. Um, but again, this is a positive development for the city of Oak Creek. And, you know, Carrie commented on the impact fees. And they're calculated by bedrooms. And this isn't just about the money, but these impact fees support our parks and our libraries and schools and, and just the host of things that, that go on. Um, and quite frankly, a dense development like this will, will impact parks and libraries greater than any single family 80 unit, single family home subdivision will. So, there's arguments to be made both ways. You know, it's very difficult up here, whether at council or planning. Uh, it always looks like we're just shoving stuff in to get a tax base and money. It really isn't the truth. We're really trying to build a community here that's, that serves purposes for everybody within the community and, more importantly, serves a long-term purpose for the, for the city itself. So a little preachy, but uh, I felt I had to get it out there because I did receive an email and they were according to them off social media they were receiving a lot of information and probably 90 percent of it was incorrect 
and I don't want to go through the whole email, but, uh, it, you know, social media can be very valuable, but if you really want to know what's going on, please, uh, call our city planners, our, our department heads, myself, the alderman. I know sometimes it's difficult and you don't get the answers you want, but really that's where you're going to find where the rubber meets the road and, and what's acceptable. So enough of that from me, uh, with that, I don't have any other questions on it. Um, if there's no other questions or comments, uh, I'll call for a motion. Super moves that the planning commission recommends that the common council adopts the conditions and restrictions as part of a planned unit development submitted by Dave Becker, Becker Properties for the properties at 8100 and 8146 South 27th Street and 8100 South Orchard, Orchard Way after a public hearing. Well, Donnie seconds. Uh, roll call, uh, beginning with Commissioner Carrillo. Carrillo, aye. Kavich, aye. Well done, aye. Seaford, aye. Chandler, aye. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Yeah, that is everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Um, moving on, uh, new business, 8B, uh, consideration of a survey, certified survey map submitted by Michael Murphy, finding the properties at 10855 South 10th Street. <clears throat> Excuse me, Carrie? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The current zoning for the property is actually split quite um, down the middle, actually. There is RS2, but then there's floodway that goes through, and you can see that kind of in blue on the screen. There's also flood fringe, and there are wetlands on the property. However, the division that is proposed does not uh, does not include the, the fill of wetlands at this point. There is a large enough area outside of those wetland delineated areas for the parcel to meet the requirements of code. So the proposal is for three new single family residential lots that would be accessed off of 10th Avenue and or the future roadway there. And out lot four, which would be the remainder, the bulk of the parcel behind that would be about 30 acres. On the screen right now is the proposed certified survey map where you can see the extensive wetlands and the floodway and flood fringe area through the middle of the property and the small wetlands that have been identified um, on the east side mostly. The three lots that are proposed along 10th Avenue again would be either access from 10th Avenue or from that uh, future Becker Street. That dedication of 30 feet for the future roadway connection point there is also included with this certified survey map. There would be some minor corrections that would be needed, mostly for the fact that this is, um, they say it's Becker Street. Um, it, it's actually Correct. Becker Road. So that would need to be corrected and there would also need to be a correction to the signature page, but those are minor corrections that are technical that can happen throughout the process, just as long as it's done before it is submitted for recording. With that information, there is a suggested motion on the screen for approval. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, with that applicant, would you like to say anything, sir? Come on up. Uh, name and address, please, for the record. Hello, Michael Murphy, uh, 3413 East Elm Road. I thank you for your time and consideration of this project going forward. Oh, I'm sorry. Was the microphone on? Uh, basically, he just kind of thanked us, but we'll make sure that microphone's on. Uh, Carrie, just make sure that thing's working. Oh, can you hear me when I'm gabbing? No. No? Really? Maybe now? If you speak up, yes. Okay, I'll try. If not, maybe we can compromise and you can move up and I can talk a little louder. <laughs> um, anyways, he, he did thank us for the opportunity for hearing the split on the land. So, on, on consideration of, of um, the certified survey map, that was his comments. So with that, I will go to uh, council for questions. Um, Don, anything? I have nothing. Don? I have no questions. Fred? No questions. Uh, Chaucey? No questions. Christine? Uh, no questions. Okay, Matt? I have none, thank you. Okay. Uh, no, it looks pretty standard to me that they're just gonna make them three lots off Becker Road. Um, 
and we have easement for a future road in case anything ever goes back there. So um, I'm confident that staff has looked at it and I'm good with it. Uh, residents, anything? Come on up to the podium, ma'am. Ma'am, you have to come to the podium and speak. Oh, well, that's the rules, sorry. Uh, anybody else? Uh, ma'am, you have to come to the... Uh, and then when you get there, just uh, name and address for the record, please. Joe Peters, 3440 East Elm. Okay. Can I ask him again where he lives in Elm? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead, please. If they weren't hearing you for whatever reason, speak into the microphone. It's 3413 East Elm. See that big mansion across the street? I don't know about mansion. Yeah, the big house? Okay. The he just put a big house across the street from us in that near the floodplain. So nothing can be built in that floodplain area. We were told that when he was going to build his house, nothing was going to be done. You know, I'll defer developed. to Carrie on that one. And are, are we talking, when we say floodplains, I'm, well, I imagine it's the wetlands on that map that's currently on the screen. Yeah, when he proposed his house on that corner, we were told, that re uh, the rest of us residents, that that whole area was going to be undeveloped. So now he's putting three lots on that land. And are they going to be put in the is, his, is his house where it says wetlands and up in, the, it would be, I guess, your right-hand top corner of that picture? No, I think his is on the upper left. Oh, upper he's left. He's the only one on the okay. left, on that side of um, home. Yeah, and if I'm reading this correctly, if he's on the upper left-hand corner, it doesn't look like he's in any flood fringe or, or wetlands, so he would be okay to build there, as well as what's lot one through three looks like they're buildable, too. But those wetlands that run through the middle there, you know, in, in um, the shaded area, that would be unbuildable. Is that correct, Carrie? That's correct. Because every spring, our yard is flooded, and... If they build more houses with elevations higher than us, we're just stuck with all this water. So I don't know what those three lots look like as far as elevation either. Whenever they submit for building permits, they will have to submit a grading plan and drainage and will have to be included in that. The engineering department has already identified that. Okay. And in that, fact, there is a note on the certified survey map itself that says green infrastructure and grading plans must be submitted to the city of Oak Creek for review and approval prior to the issuance of any building permit for any lot on this map. <clears throat> oh, sure. Come on. Uh, just so you're on the microphone so they can hear you on the minutes when they do the minutes. Could you tell me what side of 10th Avenue those three lots are on? I can't tell from that map. Uh, West side. West side of 10th. That's correct. Okay, and there are the three proposed on the bottom there. Okay. What about those other ones I see? Lot. Oh, those are already existing houses? Those are existing right. homes, yes. Okay. So and they would be they would be just south of Becker Road. Like if you were to extend Becker Road. I don't know where Becker Road is, I don't recall Becker. I know 10th Avenue goes Avenue, all the way the to... Becker Road is the one that goes back into that smaller subdivision to the east. To the east? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So they'd be just south of that roadway on the west side. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, anyone else? Oh, I hate... Yeah, uh, is there, is there any way we can get her, instead of making her come up here, can we just bring a microphone to her instead of making her walk? Is that possible? Hey All right, key guys, great. Hang on a second. We'll need your name and address, ma'am. Christine Fisher, 10991 South 10th Avenue. Um, I guess she's a little confused, and so am I. Those three lots you're talking on um, the west side of 10th Avenue, there's 
currently five lots divided up with signs. And are, is that the same location that he's talking about? Um, Carrie, or someone circled the lots before in red, the ones we're actually talking about. Could you do that again, please? Those are the three in question. Okay, those are the lots that, like you said, with if you if Becker Road would continue going west, it would be onto his property. Isn't there currently five lots for sale there? I would not know that for fact. Uh, Mr. Murphy shaking his head. No. Yeah, come on up and maybe you can explain it. No, uh, the realtor suggested that we put them on the market before we got approval. It was more of a marketing strategy. He did put four signs up there, but we are proposing only three. Oh, did, did you hear that, ma'am? They, the realtor jumped the gun and put four signs up, but they're only proposing three lots. Why they did that, I don't know. Yeah, I thought there were five, but okay. Yeah, there was five. And when you were talking about the extension of the of the roads, are you are you talking about extending Becker Road into his property? That's is that what that easement's for? Matt, you want to explain? That would just be um, that would be dedicated for future extension. We won't be extending it at this time. That's so if there was ever any future development on land that was developable, they would have to build that road. So we just wanted to secure that area instead of having to purchase it in the future. Okay, so is the, the land then that's left over behind those three lots he's um, gonna sell? It, there is room for development back there? A lot one, that would be. At this point, there's if, if he chose to develop it, there's no impact to floodplain or wetlands. Yes, it would be. Now that he would still be required to do stormwater management and things along that line, there'd be public information meetings, public hearings, and and notification to everyone along there. So at that point, if it ever did move forward, anybody that was within that note notifying area would be notified and brought forward. So you'd be able to comment on that at that point. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can ask this or um, I can't, I guess, make him answer me, but is there um, any, are you proposing any future development on the, the land that's left behind those three lots? At this time, I'm not. Do you have any other questions? I have one question. Sir, uh, use the microphone. Sir, sir, you have name and address and then your question, please. Thank you. You don't, you don't even have to stand. Do you? My name is Raymond Perlinger, and we're at 10961 South 10th Avenue. Uh -huh. And is it going to affect the value of our property? Mm, I am, I'm not an assessor, but I would say no. Um, I don't think it would nev negatively impact you if, if he built, you know, if those three home uh, lots went in and got developed. I don't think that would hurt you. That's my professional opinion, but I'm not an assessor. Because uh, between our property and the one he's proposing for housing, there's going to there's power lines going through there. Uh, if there's power lines there, there's going to be an easement from We Energies. Uh, 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 then that easement will have to remain. Okay, so it won't affect our favorable property. I I would not think so. Most things in Oak Creek are going up uh fortunately so um i again i'm not an assessor that would be more of a question for our, our assessor's right. department but i don't think i wouldn't think so okay. um are there any other questions commissioners public okay uh seeing none um we'll call for a motion it moves that the planning commission recommends to the common council that the certified survey map submitted by Michael Murphy for the property at 10855 South 10th Avenue be approved with the following condition. That all technical corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the municipal code and Wisconsin 
statures are made prior to recording. Hold on any seconds. Uh, roll call and I will begin. Uh, Bukiewicz, aye. Hold on, aye. Sleepert, aye. Chandler, aye. And aye. Sullivan, aye. Grillo, aye. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And Mr. Murphy, if you're looking for buyers for those lots, you may want to contact the school district. Knights Construction is always looking for buildable lots for homes. Uh, possibly. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, that will get us to 8C, and that is a signed plan review for a proposed sign. It's submitted by Bob Kraus, uh, Bauer Sign and Lighting Company for Root Salon Tenant Space. Uh, for the multi-tenant commercial building at 7979 South Main. So this is a secondary sign, um, a second primary sign, I should say, for the Root Salon location, which is located within Drexel Town Square on Main Street. The master sign plan for Forge and Flare, both the buildings fronting Main Street, was approved in August of 2016. So there were some... Um, allowances that may not entirely correspond to Drexel Town Square's PUD. However, the master sign plan that was approved does allow for a primary sign on any tenant space that has uh, an entryway. Since there is an entryway on the parking lot side, it was clarified in that uh, master sign program that they would be allowed to have a sign there as well. So the proposal is for a five foot, eight inch by two foot, one inch wall sign on the west elevation. This is exactly what the sign looks like and what is where it's proposed to be. You'll note that there are other signs on this elevation identifying those existing commercial spaces. Um, this is uh, in line with what the requirements for the landlord are. They have given their kind of um, preliminary approval, shall we say, there's been a little bit of difficulty in um, contacting them for a written approval, but there is indication that it, this is something that the landlords are okay with. Um, it also is in compliance with the maximum square footage that's allowed by the master sign plan, and it is compliant with the height requirements for the sign. So we are all in compliance with the DTS MUPDD as well as the master sign program, and therefore the suggested motion on the screen is for approval. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Gary. Um, is an applicant, anybody, you'd like to say a word before we start? No, you're okay, you'll wait if there's any questions. Okay, uh, we'll go right to the commission. Um, Charles, you wanna start us out? Sure, I do have a, a question for Gary. So the signs that are being considered, is it also that window sign? No, they're only proposing the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the channel letters. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fred? No questions. Don? No, no questions. Uh, Don? Um, you know, this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is my residence, and I really believe that there's probably more exposure on the back side of this building for a potential uh, customer than on the front on Main Street. And so, no, I think this is a great idea. Okay, thank you for the input. Matt? I have none, thank you. Christine? Uh, nothing here, thank you. Nothing? Um, I have nothing, I agree with Commissioner Carrillo. Um, you know, that, that backside probably gets more exposure, actually, the Main Street, as funny as it sounds. So, uh, I'm good with it, so, no uh, motion. Well, Donnie moves that the plan commission approves the sign plan submitted by Bob Krause, Power Sign and Lighting Company for the Root Salon tenant space located at 7979 South Main Street. And I second. Three per seconds. I think we had Commissioner Hanna that seconded. Oh, okay, I didn't hear. It was a little loud. Kids are having a good time out there. A little bit of echo. Um, but we do have a second. The important thing is we do have a second. So, uh, Commissioner Dan Danny, would you start us out? Well, Danny, I. Super I. Chandler, I. Anna, I. Sullivan, I. Willow, I. Kavich, I. <clears throat> okay. Um, item 8D, uh, rezoning conditional use permit. We're going to review a request submitted by Steve Papple. Papple. Pappy. Close. Hey. 
Papal. Uh, Ravel Investments, three zone the property at 441 West Ryan from B4 Highway Business to RM1 multifamily residential with a conditional use permit for a multifamily residential development. Carrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The current zoning of the property is B4. This is an anticipation of a multifamily residential development that will be brought forward to the plan commission at a later date, should the rezone and conditional use permit be approved. Conditional use permits are required for multifamily residential buildings that are in excess of four dwelling units for structure. And as we will see in a moment, there are four structures that are being proposed and they do have more than four units in them. Two of the buildings will be two-story and two of the buildings will be three-story. At the ends of each of the two-story buildings, there will be four uh, multi-level townhouse style units. Uh, before we get there though, the comprehensive plan does identify this as a uh, parcel for single family attached, but it is also in a flexible overlay district. And plan commissioners will recall, the flexible overlay district is just that. It's intended to allow the city to um, consider projects and development proposals that may not be strictly adhering to the underlying uh, future land use that has been incorporated into the comprehensive plan. That allows us to consider things that are not necessarily uh, more of an impact per se, but it allows us to um, kind of consider a development proposal that would would uh, mesh with the with the area. In that regard, they also have to meet the intended character and intensity of future development as identified in the housing and neighborhoods framework section of the comprehensive plan. And within that housing and neighborhood framework section, there is a, a category called medium uh, density multifamily. And that is that has also been identified for a similar development, the seasons at Orchard Hills. Now that has more land, more units, more buildings that were proposed. Um, the density when you get to units per acre is roughly the same. So this would be considered medium density. As shown on the screen, 118 units in four buildings and the maximum is uh, three bedrooms, but you'll see that most of them are one and two bedroom. Access along Ryan Road is actually prohibited along the entirety of the north property line. Therefore, access will be via the Eagle Summit Road that serves the um, police department currently. There has been a request as part of the internal review for there to be a secondary access point off of Eagle Summit Road. Um, and that's for emergency access as well as for just better circulation. Also included in this conceptual plan are a clubhouse, water feature slash um, splash pad, playground and other outdoor amenities that will be programmed as part of the plan review. It does also call for underground and surface parking, a total of 260 overall. Of that, 160 would be underground, 90 would be surface, and 10 would be dedicated to the clubhouse itself. The minimum requirements are one and a half parking stalls for studio and one bedroom apartments, two stalls for two bedrooms, and two and a half stalls for anything above three or three and up. That would equate to about 196 stalls, so they are, um, they are above what is necessary per code. On the screen right now are some concept elevations. These are the three-story buildings that you would see, and they are in the middle of the development. And these are the concept elevations for the two-story. This is inclusive of those townhouse style, which are two-story. And these are conceptual renderings of what the development may look like should this be approved and recommended for approval by the council. With that information, there's a suggested motion for approval on the screen. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, at this time, if the applicant would like to come up, say anything. Uh, good evening. My name is Steve Pape. Uh, address is 325 East Chicago in Milwaukee. Um, I'm with uh, Rebel Investments. We're the uh, lead sponsor uh, on this. We're partnering with Altius Construction. 
uh, and Scott Drees and Jonathan Ward, who could not be here this evening. Um, I'm here with our architect and uh, design partner, Eric Herman. Um, did I say that right? That's <laughs> close. Um, and again, I just uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the opportunity and commissioners for your time tonight. And I also just wanted to say um, we're drawn to suburban communities um, with forward thinking leadership. Um, as well as uh, a staff and a group of uh, individuals at the leadership level um, that are willing to work with investors and developers to create communities and uh, increase housing. And Oak Creek checks all those boxes. And I just want to commend Carrie's department and Doug's department, the planning department has been phenomenal to work with to get us to this point in our proposal. Um, and I just want to say thank you for, uh, to get us to, to, uh, to this point today. Um, Carrie did a phenomenal job uh, in summary, um, uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Eric here to kind of uh, walk you guys through any design questions. Uh, I'm also here to answer any questions as well, but thank you. Thank you. Eric Harmon, AG Architecture, uh, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Uh, I will echo that uh, Carrie did a great job. And if we could just go to the perspective um, that shows the two and three stories. because so I think the one thing that we wanted to touch on um, is that the site plan was specifically designed to have the two story buildings flanking uh, the roadway, but then also the residential area to the rear of the site. So those two story buildings and the townhome units are giving the largest residential presence to not only the road, but the community behind. Uh, and then that the three story structures, which are centered in the site um, actually step down to those two-story elements on the end as well all with the intention of working uh, to blend in with the residential character of what will be a thriving neighborhood so available for any other questions that you guys might have hey, thank you uh, come on up sir before we go to commission Good evening, Mark Drager, 320 West Trillium Terrace. Okay, I'm on the south side. Okay. And um, nice presentation, and it, I think it looks beautiful myself. Uh, just had a couple questions. Um, one of the statements is provide ample screening between property and a single family neighborhood to the south, which is me and my neighbors. So my question is, do you have anything yet? Or will we have an opportunity to review that? Um, right. Germs, trees, whatever. Uh, that is county-owned land, correct? There is a county-owned parcel that would be in between the existing single-family residential neighborhood, Fairfield, and this development parcel. They are not crossing that property boundary. Uh, we have not gotten to site and building plan review yet. However, as part of that review, we would be reviewing landscaping and other features with the public yes yes okay just, just as we're doing here yes okay so just so you know it's coming you'll see me again <laughs> okay <laughs> so um and then the um uh the other thing um well you can see on your map here the uh you have some bocce courts and tennis courts and some things in the background there um the other concern i would have is, is whenever we get to review this is lighting um because generally you see sports things with bright lights very bright lights and we're, we're fairly close you know we can see sure. we can see down there to the uh, cummins place you know you see lights in the distance but our neighborhood is you know the normal neighborhood type lighting sure. maybe you'd call it subdued but i can understand that if you're building something with tennis courts you want these super bright lights but i would ask for some consideration the aiming of the lights and keeping it down and not not seeing floodlights yeah. through that. It, it would meet our lighting code, and we shade mm -hmm. that off. Uh, you know, yeah. with everything going LED, we've become very conscious of that over mm -hmm. the last few developments, and we ask for cutoffs so we don't have stray light pollution going where it's going. Right. Um, also, those those sport courts, whatever they may be, uh, unlike a parking lot, would probably go dark after a certain time because mm -hmm. nobody's going to be out there at 2 in the morning, hopefully mm -hmm. playing tennis. Okay. A little inappropriate, but so those were just two concerns of being a neighbor, you know, in keeping with the residential feel for the for the area. And then I had a question, just a general question. Um, it also mentioned on the back page. I hope nobody's stressing out with these simple questions. Oh no, but, no. Uh, <laughs> you know what? We'd rather get them out of the way now yeah. and have a good understanding and communication sure. than uh, 
you know, to go back and forth and have to repeat this exercise two or three times. Sure. Um, so this one is just on page four where it says um, it's the site is adjacent to a uh, bus route and a proposed extension of a bikeway. And I had not heard about that. I was wondering, can anybody point that out roughly well, where the bikeway would be going? Uh, the bikeway is, a, and uh, Laurie, you can, you can maybe help me out. It, it's, it's proposed to run along uh, the train tracks. And, oh, and it hooks up there. over on Oakwood, correct? It was going to go the other side and on the, on the west side of the tracks. I think, actually, Mr. Mayor, in this area, the Oak Leaf Trail is the public sidewalk that's along Ryan Road. It is? Oh, the, I didn't know oh, the that's I, I believe for a portion of it, it is. Because okay. oh. okay. we're actually talking about trying to get a trail from Ryan to Oakwood. Okay, Commissioner uh, Sullivan is disagreeing with me. Well, yeah, so we're all wrong, but Matt talk. I know behind FedEx there was supposed to be a trail. Too. Correct. It's along the right hand side of the railroad tracks, which is west. <laughs> Correct. Okay, okay west. No, east. East. Well, it depends where you're west standing. Where you're <laughs> yeah. East or west? East. Matt, any, anything on that? No. I, nothing I, that's coming out of engineering. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we haven't, we haven't, I know there was discussion during Amazon and other developments along there that there was potential for a future um, mm -hmm. bicycle accommodations. And that's nice. I think that's but really nice. I, I was just curious because yeah, I had not heard about it. It just hasn't, it, it, it hasn't come to fruition or, okay. or, or move forward as much as most people would like or. Sure. sure. Uh, as we get developments in, we always try to connect up and actually those are county those are all county trails and correct. Mm -hmm. so i just remember exclusively when we did the fedex over on oakwood uh on the back side there we we were supposed to have a bike trail and uh they had to put up a wall and a fence but we couldn't figure out how to cross railroad tracks mr mayor i don't think you're actually on mic oh shoot sorry maybe that lady was right maybe i ain't <laughs> talking into the mic um either way but by fedex i could have sworn it was going to be on the east side of the tracks. We couldn't figure out how to navigate across the tracks. So, so again, as, as Commissioner Sullivan said, as Amazon comes in, we look to get those easements so we can do connectivity for the bike trails. Sure. sure. But I didn't, I didn't realize the sidewalk was part of Oakley. In some, in some areas it is, maybe I'm wrong in this particular location, but it does kind of snake along sidewalks and along the street itself. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you. I hope I that helps. It was a messy explanation. Yeah, but. yeah. it just was in the paperwork here, so that's why I brought it up. Yeah, so. yeah there's no immediate plan for an extension of a public bike trail in this exact area. But, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice presentation. Uh, anyone else? Come on up, sir. Mike, we're dragging you up in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike Banyan, 9828 South Deer Path Drive. A uh, couple questions I'm not familiar with. Some of the terminology used, multifamily, are these apartments? Apartments. Okay. Do we have an idea of what the charge is going to be? One bedroom, or one bedroom, two bedroom? Yeah, 1400 for a one bedroom. Excuse me. Uh, all comments have to be on microphone. Oh, sorry. Carrie, do you have that in the presentation? Or? Yeah, is that something that I could just get? Yet. Uh, you know, I will have them step up when you're done and okay. answer the questions. No um, and then what was I going to say? Um, oh, other developments that you have done, uh, maybe within the last five years. Do we have a list? Do we as a, as a community look at other developments that this company has done to find out how those properties look, look five, ten years later? Yeah, do we, do, you, do, yeah, do yes, we do that? Typically we do, and they can expound on that. Okay. And um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, oh, storage. Uh, you said there's some uh, parking lots, uh, parking spaces on top um, and some below ground. Any limitations on storage of recreational vehicles and things of that sort that you have within your bylaws of Actually, that's part of the municipal code that would not be allowed in a multifamily residential district. It would not be allowed to store no. that in that? No, property. not in a multifamily residential district. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. Um, guys, if you would, could you just kind of maybe uh, bring up some of your 
your past developments, where you've been, uh, what you've done, and then uh, typical rents for the one, two, three bedrooms. Oh, thanks, Gary. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the the folks that can speak to the development experience in Oak Creek are not here tonight. Altius uh, Construction and Jonathan Ward, I think it was up on the screen earlier, they've done up to 1,500 uh, units in the last five years, uh, constructed and developed. Uh, so that's really why we're partnering with them. Uh, Revel Investments, we're a, uh, an investment company and a management company. And so uh, Scott and Jonathan bring the development expertise and construction expertise to the table. They also were the contractor that built uh, Drexel Town, um, not Drexel Town Square, um, Emerald Row. Thank you. Um, and I think that was built in 2016. And, and um, so a testament to their uh, quality of the projects that they build, still standing and they look phenomenal. Uh, in terms of rents, they're up on the screen right now. So for a one bedroom, uh, 14 and 25 a month, and then on up there for the two to three bedrooms, um, up to about $2,350 for a two bedroom. And then I think the three bedroom, two bath is two, about $2,500 a month. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Uh, hopefully that, that answered your question. And again, uh, you know, even it was Rick Barrett that developed Emerald Row, but his right. builder was Altius. So uh, one example is Emerald Row uh, right here in Drexel Town Square. I know they've done some work in Menominee Falls and Waukesha, Third Ward. Uh, they've been around quite a bit. Yeah, I'm sorry. One more thing to add. We do have a project with this current team under construction right now in Brookfield. Um, it's 24 units on Brookfield Road and Blue Mountain Road uh, in the town of Brookfield, directly behind Cops Custard. Um, so it's coming on the ground right now, and that one's opening up in November of this year. So, uh, But that is a good question. And, and typically when any developer, not just this developer, comes forward, uh, I don't want to say a background check's done, but... Uh, our planning staff looks into what they've done, uh, even if they're from out of state. We've had a lot of out of state people come in and we take take a look at some of the developments that have been done in other parts of the country as well. Uh, so we get a good feel of what they've done, if they own it, if they flip it and how it all goes. And, um, you know, I think our staff does a pretty thorough job of it. Uh, believe it or not, we we say no to a lot of things that just never hit the public. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want you made a comment on the other um, development earlier on 27th Street. Oh, Mike Banyan, 9828 South Deer Path Drive. Thanks. Um, you made a comment about the other development on 27th Street and the apartments, and it's part of the total comprehensive plan that you have. I tried looking on the website, and I can't find that plan. Where would I look for that? And, and, and does the plan commission have kind of a percentage of what you think you might be dedicating to multifamily versus single family? And is it in that plan? Matt? Oh, Carrie. So the plan that I referenced is actually a comprehensive plan, and that is available on our website. Okay. The multifamily residential development that I mentioned on 27th Street is called the Seasons at Orchard Hills. And the reason that you haven't found any plans is because that was actually approved back in 2018. Um, they're actually fully built out right now. So that's a development that you can just go past on 27th Street, and it's all constructed right now. Um, as far as the density is concerned there, they have two parcels, and they have a little bit more land, and they have more units. But when you break it down as units per acre, it r roughly is the same here as it is there. Um, as far as the percentage of apartments in the city as opposed to single-family residential, we don't have an exact figure that uh, I can point to at this point. I can tell you that most of the developments that we are seeing, at least in the past two years, have been multifamily residential. The last subdivisions that we had were, um, we Reserve. had a two-phase um, single-family residential subdivision off of Nicholson Road called Eastbrook Preserve that had mm, 50 units in one and 60 units in another, somewhere around that line. Uh, those were single family. The other single family residential um, subdivision extensions that we had in the last five years, uh, one was an eight parcel uh, subdivision extension over um, on Carrollville Crossing. Mm -hmm. And then the last one was the Glen Crossing additions, and uh, there were about yeah. 80 extra, 80 new uh, residential subdivision lots there. But I, I guess my question, maybe I should be more specific. My question is, as a resident of Oak Creek, I should be able to get on the website and find out what the Planning Commission plan for Oak Creek is for residential And, and again, on properties. the website, exactly where to find that would probably be in 
the comprehensive plan is available on the website under the plan de planning department, community okay. development department page. Okay, and you said it was developed in 18, so I have to go to that year, is that? Because no, I was just, no. I was looking through it before and I couldn't find anything that was called a comprehensive plan, so. You know. Yeah, great, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. That'd be yes, wonderful. the comprehensive plan is available online, but we don't have all of the plans that the plan commission has approved for individual developments online in the last few years. The only ones that we have available mm -hmm. are online are the ones that are upcoming or just recently approved. So no, we won't have the, or the seasons at Orchard Hills plans that are available on our website, but we will. We do have the comprehensive plan available. No, and, and I understand that. I, I'm kind of I'm getting to the st strategic plan, strategic vision that you all have as a planning commission, and where is that, and what does that look like? Well, it's not very specific. You know, specifics are great, but I understand that it's sensitive to it's actually two coming. different things. Our strategic plans back there, and it's our values, missions, and oh, okay. success factors that help guide the city. But then the comprehensive plan is really the land use, yeah. and it's kind of a, a thirty thousand foot view of of what planning and visions for the city and where things fit best. Um, and what do we redo about every 10 years we take a look at that thing? The last time that we had a revision that was comprehensive was back in, it was adopted in 2001, but it's been updated incrementally since then. The last overhaul, the major overhaul that is available on our website now was adopted March, 2020. So, for instance, and I'll go way back, but before Drexel Interchange went in, the land use was probably completely different than what you see today because once the interchange went in, everything changed, including the property we're at. So, so the plan can be altered and changed, but it, it, it is the basic building blocks for what we're looking for. So, for example, um, 27th Street, it's business district, you know, it's, it's going to be multifamily and and business uh, versus right. just putting a sort of family home there. So, you know, we, we try to be prudent in our decisions and, and which way we're going. It's not to say that somebody can't come in and everything completely changes, but the Amazon property, for example, even though it was a farm field for many, many years, it was always envisioned to be a business park. Okay. All right. Thanks. So hope yeah. that helps. Yeah. So, um, boy, let me get, I got all tangled up here. Uh, commission, let's start with Commissioner Hanna. Any questions? Uh, yes, Comments? Actually, it's, um, I'm not sure if it's for the applicant or uh, Matt. So with this development coming in, and I know the location is uh, beside the, the police station and the courthouse, uh, has the uh, access uh, uh, impact on Ryan Road has been looked at? Is it gonna be a signalized uh, ex uh, access or just like a stop sign? So just want to make sure that we have accounted for that. At, at this stage in, in the planning and the rezoning, we, you know, that hasn't come forward. That is definitely a discussion we can have internally and with the developer um, and, and look at that and whether um, there is a need or a desire from the city uh, to move forward with a request in a TIA for that and finding out what needs might be required at that intersection. Sure, that makes sense. And also this is, I believe as a resident of Oak Creek, this is something also I would like to know about uh, taking that uh, route to the freeway. So um, it's just something to account for when residents wanna give their input about this development. Is that it, Christine? Yes, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Matt. I have none at this time. Uh, Don? No, I don't really have any questions. It, it just looks like a, a beautiful layout and with the amenities, and it's something we don't really see that often in Oak Creek. So thank you. Uh, Don? Oh, I have no questions. Fred? No questions. Chaucy? I do have a question for the applicant. Uh, my question is, can you provide more information on why this location in this business area versus a, a more residential area? Um, again, Steve Pape, 325 East Chicago, Milwaukee. Um, I think I understand your question. I'll do my best to answer it. Um, what drew us to this site um, specifically was the number of um, job creators that have been 
built in the past five years, basically from Milwaukee, the, from Oak Creek all the way south to the Illinois line. And Ryan Road is at the front door of those jobs. And, um, and, and the proximity to 94 and getting to those jobs is huge. Um, so that's the main reason that we were drawn to the site, in addition to what I said earlier about the forward-thinking leadership, and also I failed to mention earlier about school districts. We look for strong school districts. So Oak Creek obviously checks all those boxes. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. And then one additional question. So are there residential areas close by? Well, Fairfield, in, in meeting with, with the developers, I'll, I'll kind of take that one. Um, the Fairfield subdivision lot line to lot line is 350 feet away, and that's over some land that the county owns. So that, that's what was stated to me by the developer, so uh, 350 feet. So the property that we're discussing is in the red hatched on the screen. The parcel that is immediately south, that's the county-owned land, that's zone P1. You can just see on the bottom right, that's the beginning of the, actually kind of the interior portion of the Fairfield subdivision. That's RS2. There is more residential further north, but it's not immediately adjacent to Ryan Road. Now, immediately to the west is Edgerton Contractors. Our earth moving company and then of course uh the police and courthouse is um to the east and kitty corner is brentwood animal hospital yes thank you yep. mm -hmm. okay um i too I, I you know i did meet with the developer we've had multiple things come in here and again as as we went through that comprehensive plan carrie mentioned it that it's a flex district because we didn't know what it would be. It, it could very well have been a business and we could be talking about uh, a Tires Plus or a, a Menards or who knows what, what could have, you know, popped up there. I, I don't know if the land could support that stuff, but it could be probably far more impactful than this. And there's been other developments that have come and, uh, you know, obviously planning did their due diligence and, uh, you know, they didn't pass go and, and even get to this point. So that this was... Uh, a nice, a nice looking uh, addition to the city, Carrie. Um, Mr. Mayor, we did receive an email from a resident oh, of Fairfield. Okay. Yes, please. I forgot. This is from that. Sandy Kruger. Hello, we are unable to attend the plan commission meeting on July 27, 2021. We are residents in the Fairfield neighborhood, and the property in question is near our home. We are against the change of rezoning and the conditional use permit for this property. The area does not need additional apartments. Ryan Road is busy, is a busy and crowded, crowded road. The additional traffic lighting and possible safety concerns do not fit in this area of the city. Thank you, Sandy Kruger. Hey, and again, uh, you know, those are those are comments and you know we we've, we've covered quite a bit of that. The the traffic light, as Matt said, our engineering department would take a look at that if it's warranted. Um, lighting is is through the code and, and it's it's all correctable. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure about safety concerns that that has to do with traffic, but I don't like to speculate on 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 the safety of just what's being built and and who's moving in. That's that's uh, not a good practice. So, uh, I guess the last thing I want to do is ask Assistant Chief Havy to come on up and uh, just fire's input uh, because this affects fire. Uh, they have to every time we put in property and people. Um, Everybody applauds and then they take care of it. <laughs> so go ahead, Mike. All right, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Assistant Chief Mike Havey with Fire. Uh, as mentioned in the staff report, we did look at uh, some of the access roads um, and we we're looking for a secondary access. And also on the northwest corner um, of the building, um, that corner we're looking for a either a turnaround point or a radius um, that we can maneuver our vehicles to get back out of that northwest corner. Um, other than that, we don't have any specific concerns um, of, of the plans that were submitted. And if there's any other questions, I can answer those. Um, yeah, in meeting with them, I thought they were talking about uh, extending, is it Eagle Summit? and getting you a secondary access in there. So. Yeah, that was in some of our discussions um, earlier on, so we are hopeful that, that um, we can uh, achieve what's needed to be done there. Okay. All right, 
Thank you, Mike. Okay. Um, again, I myself, though, uh, at this point, I, I, th I think it's an appropriate use. And I, I haven't talked to the aldermen of the district. Um, but again, I think it's better than anything that's, that's come through. So uh, with that, if there's no further questions or comments, uh, motion, please. And I move that the plan commission recommends to the common council that the property at 441 West Ryan Road be rezoned from B4 Highway Business to uh, RM1 Multifamily Residential with a conditional use permit for multifamily residential dwelling in excess of four dwelling units per structure after a public hearing and subject to condition and restriction that will be prepared for the plan commission review at the next meeting, August 10th, 2021. Sleeper seconds. Uh, roll call, beginning with you, Fred. Sleeper aye. Chamber aye. Hannah aye. Sullivan aye. Grillo aye. Avich aye. Bodani aye. Okay. Um, that will get us to just some basic announcements. Uh, Dawn, farmer's market update. Uh, we are what, on week eight of the farmer's market. We're back to normal because dog days was last week. Um, no, come out and support your farmers, your local yeah. farmers. Uh, I believe we do have a pop-up beer garden going on at Abachine this weekend. Am I correct? So uh, please get out there. It will run Thursday to Saturday, I believe, right? Check the website for more information. Thank you. Check the website for more information. <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, motion for adjournment, please. Also, tomorrow is um, food trucks. Oh, tomorrow is food trucks. Food trucks on the square tomorrow night, everybody. Yep. Check our Facebook page for that one. <laughs> Krill moves to adjourn. At 7.22. Super seconds. Uh, roll call, starting with Commissioner Chandler. Chandler, aye. Sullivan, aye. Quillo, aye. David, aye. Aldani, aye. Uh -huh. Super, aye. Yep. And again, thank you to our staff. Uh, terrific job, as always. IT guy, thank you for the microphone. Appreciate that.